Don't go there, Kitty. That is a highly radiated zone. Radiated? Yes, little Kitty. Hey, friends. I'm sure even you must have felt a bit confused about what I've been screaming about. But don't worry, as in today's episode, we are going to learn about this devastating type of pollution named radioactive or radiation pollution, which has been unknowingly affecting us since ages, and also figure out what we can do to control it. Zoom in! So, before we learn about radioactive pollution, we need to know what radiation is. Radiation is the emission of energy as electromagnetic waves, which include visible light, radio waves, microwaves, infrared and ultraviolet lights, X-rays and gamma rays. We are surrounded by technologically advanced devices such as cell phones, TV, computers that generate low levels of radiation which basically remain unnoticed. But there are other human activities such as handling and processing radioactive materials, testing nuclear weapons, mining of radioactive ores, etc., etc., generate a very high level of radiation called radioactive waste. And when the level of natural radiation increases in the environment due to human activities, it is known as radioactive pollution. But the crucial question is, how do these harmful substances affect the environment? Let's have a look. The radiation that we come in contact with are of two types. The first is ionizing radiation and the other is non-ionizing radiation. We are daily exposed to some amount of non-ionizing radiation, which merely has an effect on us. On the other hand, ionizing radiations can penetrate through the skin and damage the cells and tissues, leading to numerous diseases. Yes, it can damage the DNA strands that can directly affect the future generations. Not only that, but if these radiations enter the face tissue, then it can lead to hair loss, mouth ulceration, and in severe cases, leukemia and premature aging. But remember my friends, although radioactive pollution is hazardous, it can be quickly brought under control by following these specific steps. Yes, the first thing we can do is try to use the alternative energy resources that can replace nuclear energy that will automatically reduce the nuclear contamination. Next, we can limit the usage of nuclear reactors and, if possible, try to eradicate its usage in industries and laboratories to stop the leakage that gets released in the surroundings. Also, the waste generated should be reduced into harmless form before disposing or storing it. And only low radiated wastes should be disposed of into the sewage. The next best thing to do is we should provide safety garments to the workers who are working at the factories that create nuclear wastes. And believe me, my friends, if we follow all these steps, soon the radioactive waste can be brought under control and our world will be a safer place to be in. But do not forget that the first step for any solution is by spreading information about it. So, do help our world by sharing this video with your friends and family. Trivia time! Did you know all the American flags placed on the moon are now white due to radiation from the sun? Also, 
talking about radiation, the banana that we enjoy eating is slightly radiated, which is equivalent to 1% of the radiation that we are daily exposed to. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs>